Alan, thanks for taking the time to have a chat with me today. I appreciate that very much. Alan, you wear a lot of hats. I've got a list here. I'm going to read it off. Okay. Director of Research at the Seed Biotechnology Center. Professional researcher with the College of Biotechnology Sciences at UC Davis. Highly involved with the National Association of Plant Breeders. Organizing committee for the 13th Annual Soul Genomics Conference that UC Davis is hosting here today. Organizer and instructor at the Plant Breeding Academy. And co-leader of the African Orphan Crops Consortium. Okay. To suggest that you've contributed to plant breeding would obviously be a considerable understatement. What drives you to continue this important work, Alan? I'm having fun. Perfect. Yeah, you know, it's fun, and I think we're making a difference. That's, you know, that's really the driver. And um, I've had, I would say, a couple careers, almost, and, and, it, and it just keeps getting more and more fun. Uh, you know, I started in industry, and then I'm, uh, you know, I've been in academia now for about 14, 15 years. And the research, the, I'm lucky that I work very closely with both still, and I continue to do so. And, you know, I really get to see the, comp the complement between, uh, you know, those, those two factions. And um, the, uh, the driver now is to see, uh, new, uh, to see programs develop and also the education part. I really enjoy the education right. and seeing results, you know, in the plant breeding world. Well, your, your passion and love for it certainly comes across. There's no doubt about that. I'm certainly not the first person to suggest that. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Alan, you've worked with a number of crops over the years. Where does your research take you now, and what do you see coming in the future? Uh, right now, my main crop that I'm working on is peppers, okay. and breeding, breeding in peppers. We just started a spinach uh, breeding program as well okay. uh, this first year. And uh, we're really, when I first started at UC Davis, I uh, was working in vegetable crops. I have a unique position that I'm actually funded by the seed industry. Um, and uh, so my customers is only about 250 commodities uh, in California. Uh, and uh, so you've got to choose some. <laughs> but my goal is most of our California crops really didn't have all the tools, say, the, the corn world had, the soybean world, the wheat, the canolas, and so on, because of the smaller communities that were built. So I started kind of building tools. And uh, my background is really in, in plant breeding but also in molecular breeding and developing those tools. So I've spent, I spent say the first five, seven, eight years building those tools. Um, and I focused on pepper, but I, I work on a lot of different other crops at, in the lab at the genomic level. And we're getting to a really great area right now where we're using those tools. We've got the genetic populations to use those. We're, we're trying to apply them. We're, we're actually getting some, some germplasm out, you know, that's combined some very cool traits that we haven't been able to, to handle without these say, more precise tools, whether it's uh, phenotyping, you know, uh, in the lab or, you know, or genotypes. Um, as far as the future, I think we, uh, there's always improvement. Plant breeders will always be around for sure. And, and I emphasize it's all about the tools. We talk about genomics, you know, as being a really important part of breeding, but it is just one tool that we apply, you know, to the breeding program. Um, give you an example. Uh, we screen for uh, phytophthora resistance. It's actually much more efficient for me. I have a really rapid screen in the greenhouse. I can screen in the greenhouse, but then I only do genotypes on the ones that I'm interested in to figure out really what I selected. And that turns out to be much more efficient than just, say, applying, say, genotypes or genomics on everything. It's faster, and it, I don't have to deal with as much data and things that I just, you know, waste money and time on. Right, right. Um, in the a little bit in the future, what we're getting into, and you know, we had some sessions at this conference, just to get a peek in, is the high throughput phenotyping. That's I would say most developed for sure in the field crops. Everybody's doing drones and flying over corn fields and soybean fields and wheat fields, and that's really more in the 2D. But with vegetable crops and most of our crops in California, like tree crops, clonal propagated crops, we really want to see. We need to see 3D. We're interested in fruit. We're interested in plant architecture. It's, and so on. It's not just about, say, irradiance, you know, do for drought or, or heat stress or, or things like that. So it's a little more complex. Right. Complex, and maybe we're not 100% sure how the tools fit yet, but ha like you said before, having the tools allows us to go to that next stage. Yeah, exactly. So we're at the, it's really at the development stage, very early stage of high throughput phenotyping. I'll give you an example of a really cool talk we had from Dr. Dave Slaughter yesterday at, uh, from UC Davis, he started his talk and he showed um, 
the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl apparently had 36 cameras around it. And you see, they showed, you know, so when, the, when a running back is kind of breaking the plane to see if or not he, you know, he scored a touchdown or not, they have all these cameras. Right. And we're using the exact same materials in a plant. You, you know, and like you said, it's different level measures of, of success. And, um, but it's the exact same technology we're trying to, plant, to apply to plant breeding. Right, excellent, exciting stuff. Yeah. Alan, what would you say to those researchers and academics who believe their job is to go out and do great research and then it's somebody else's job to go tell the story? What I've learned really in really my career is that, and we're something that we really focus on a lot in Davis, we don't have very many walls. You need an ag engineer, and all plant breeders know this. Um, they, they have to have a pathologist, an entomologist, a bioinformatician, a nutritionist, so on. There's no way one person can do it. And everybody has to be on that team. And it's an integrated, it, you know, and I think that's what drives all plant breeders. There is a product at the end as opposed to a paper. Right. You, you know, there's a real product that, that can feed somebody, uh, a plant variety that's better for the farmers and, and so on. So we're seeing this more and more, and this is a good example at this conference that we tried to do. This was you know, a genomics-driven conference from the, you know, from the very beginning. And now that we have a lot of these tools, we're push, we have a lot of plant breeding talks. And basically, I'm telling people, you know, they have to see the end. And it, they will do a much better job if they understand the application at the other end as well. So if they understand the application, which makes sense to me, what advice would you give them about communicating that? Communicating, and I, call, I say the story, and I think what I mean by that is the why, communicating the why. I think that it would probably be futile to try and talk about the how to most people, like the, the technology right. that you get, but the why. So what advice would you give on how the to why, communicate the why? How to communicate the why. Um, a good example, I mean, I think is way better than, like you say, communicating just to how the technology is right. and, and all, the, all the numbers and things that may be cool to the people, you know, that are the professionals in the field. But the why comes down to, you know, uh, more nutritious crops, more food on people's tables, and things like that. I think it's really important to have that, that personal example. Absolutely. Um, and, and one personal example is way better than, you know, a bunch of numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I believe congratulations are in order. The 13th Annual uh, Soul Genomics Conference that we're here at, at UC Davis, by all accounts, a wildly huge success. So congratulations to you and your team in helping to pull this together. Why is it important to bring together your colleagues from all over the world to have an event like this? It's, um, it's very, very important in, in that it updates everybody, essentially. And the, the, one of the most important things about meetings, the content is very important, but what it does, it attracts the top people in the world, but then it starts new collaborations. And it's really the meetings that happen in the background, and they say, oh, wow, this guy's working on this. You know, I think we can work together and really, you know, come out with something that individually we could not. Right. It's really about the collaborations. Excellent. Well, and, and we had over 300 people? 360. 360 and people. And that's 100 more than, than this conference has ever seen, so we're really, really happy. Well, and, and I would suggest that something to, that might have to do with that is the fact that uh, this campus is, well, quite frankly, spectacular. It, uh, everyone has been incredibly welcoming to, uh, to have all of us here, and the facilities here are second to none. I've been on a lot of campuses around the world, <laughs> and this is second to none. So I can see why it has its reputation as the number one egg school in the world. Well, thank you very much. I mean, it's, uh, it's always nice to come to California, I think. <laughs> it, agreed, agreed. <laughs> Thanks very much for sitting down with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.